Welcome to Atlantic Cape Community College's Cold Stress Guide. The information contained in this presentation is from the U.S. Department of Labor Occupational Safety and Health Administration. This information can also be found at OSHA's website. Anyone working in a cold environment may be at risk of cold stress. Some workers may be required to work outdoors in cold environments and for extended periods. For example, snow cleanup crews, sanitation workers, police officers, and emergency response and recovery personnel, like firefighters and emergency medical technicians. Cold stress can be encountered in these types of work environments. The following frequently asked questions will help workers understand what cold stress is, how it may affect their health and safety, and how it can be prevented. How cold is too cold? What constitutes extreme cold and its effects can vary across different areas of the country. In regions that are not used to winter weather, near freezing temperatures are considered extreme cold. A cold environment forces the body to work harder to maintain its temperature. Whenever temperatures drop below normal and wind speed increases, heat can leave your body more rapidly. Wind chill is the temperature your body feels when air temperature and wind speed are combined. For example, when the air temperature is 40 degrees Fahrenheit and the wind speed is 35 miles per hour, the effect on the exposed skin is as if the air temperature was 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Cold stress occurs by driving down the skin temperature and eventually the internal body temperature, which is your core temperature. This may lead to serious health problems and may cause tissue damage and possibly death. What are the risk factors that contribute to cold stress? Some of the risk factors that contribute to cold stress are wetness or dampness, dressing improperly and exhaustion, predisposing health conditions such as hypertension, hypothyroidism and diabetes, or poor physical conditioning. How does the body react to cold conditions? In a cold environment, most of the body's energy is used to keep the internal core temperature warm. Over time, the body will begin to shift blood flow from the extremities, such as the hands, feet, arms, and legs, and the outer skin to the core, the chest, and the abdomen. This shift allows the exposed skin and the extremities to cool rapidly and increases the risk of frostbite and hypothermia. Combine this scenario with exposure to a wet environment and trench foot may also be a problem. What are the most common cold-induced illnesses or injuries? Hypothermia, frostbite, trench foot, and chillblains. What is hypothermia? Hypothermia occurs when body heat is lost faster than it can be replaced and the normal body temperature of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit drops to less than 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Hypothermia is most likely at very cold temperatures, but it can occur even at cool temperatures above 40 degrees Fahrenheit if a person becomes chilled from rain, sweat, or submersion in cold water. What are the symptoms of hypothermia? Mild symptoms include an exposed worker being alert, and he or she may begin to shiver and stomp their feet in order to generate heat. This slide illustrates some early warning signs of hypothermia. Irrational behavior, slurred speech, slowed heart rate, shivering, feeling cold, and clumsiness. Moderate to severe symptoms of hypothermia are that as the body temperature continues to fall, symptoms will worsen and shivering will stop. The worker may lose coordination and fumble with items in the hand, become confused and disoriented. He or she may be unable to walk or stand, pupils become dilated, pulse and breathing become slowed, and loss of consciousness can occur. A person could die if help is not received immediately. What are the warning signs of hypothermia? Confusion, 
shivering, difficulty speaking, sleepiness, and stiff muscles. What can be done for a person suffering from hypothermia? Call 911 immediately in an emergency. Otherwise, seek medical assistance as soon as possible. Move the person to a warm, dry area. Remove wet clothes and replace with dry clothes. Cover the body, including the head and neck, with layers of blankets and with a vapor barrier, such as a tarp, garbage bag, do not cover the face. If medical help is more than 30 minutes away, give warm sweetened drinks, if alert, but no alcohol, to help increase the body temperature. Never try to give a drink to an unconscious person. Place warm bottles or hot packs in the armpits, sides of the chest and groin, and call 911 for additional rewarming instructions. If a person is not breathing or has no pulse, call 911 for emergency medical assistance immediately. Perform cardiopulmonary resuscitation until the person responds or medical aid becomes available. What is frostbite? Frostbite is an injury to the body that is caused by freezing of the skin and underlying tissues. The lower the temperature, the more quickly frostbite will occur. Frostbite typically affects the extremities, particularly the feet and hands. Amputation may be required in severe cases. What are the symptoms of frostbite? Reddened skin develops and white patches. Numbness in the affected part. The affected area feels firm or hard, and blisters may occur in the affected part in severe cases. Redness or pain in any skin area may be the first sign of frostbite, other signs include a white or grayish yellow skin area, skin that feels unusually firm or waxy, and numbness. What can be done for a person suffering from frostbite? Follow the recommendations described above for hypothermia. Do not rub the affected area to warm it because this action can cause more damage. Do not apply snow or water. Do not break blisters. Loosely cover and protect the area from contact. Do not try to rewarm the frostbitten area before getting medical help. For example, do not place in warm water. If a frostbitten area is rewarmed and gets frozen again, more tissue damage will occur. It is safer for the frostbitten area to be rewarmed by medical professionals. Give warm, sweetened drinks if the person is alert. Avoid drinks with alcohol. What is trench foot? Trench foot or immersion foot is caused by prolonged exposure to wet and cold temperatures. It can occur at temperatures as high as 60 degrees Fahrenheit if the feet are constantly wet. Non-freezing injury occurs because wet feet lose heat 25 times faster than dry feet. To prevent heat loss, the body constricts the blood vessels to shut down circulation in the feet. The skin tissue begins to die because of lack of oxygen and nutrients and due to the buildup of toxic products. What are the symptoms of trench foot? Redness of the skin, swelling, numbness, blisters. Trench foot can even lead to tingling pain, blisters or ulcers, bleeding under the skin, and gangrene. What can be done for a person suffering from immersion foot? Call 911 immediately in an emergency. Otherwise, seek medical assistance as soon as possible. Remove the shoes or boots and wet socks and dry the feet. What are chillblains? Chillblains are painful inflammation of small blood vessels in the skin caused by the repeated exposure of skin to temperatures just above freezing to as high as 60 degrees Fahrenheit. What are the symptoms of chillblains? Redness, itching, possible blistering, inflammation, possible ulceration in severe cases. What can be done for a person suffering from chillblains? Avoid scratching. Slowly warm the skin. Use corticosteroid creams to relieve itching and swelling. Keep blisters and ulcers clean and covered. How can cold stress be prevented? 
Although OSHA does not have a specific standard that covers working in cold environments, employers have a responsibility to provide workers with employment and a place of employment which are free from recognized hazards, including cold stress, which are causing or are likely to cause death or serious physical harm to them. Employers should therefore train workers on the hazards of the job and safety measures to use, such as engineering controls and safe work practices that will protect workers' safety and health. Employers should train workers on how to prevent and recognize cold stress illnesses and injuries and how to apply first aid treatment. Workers should be trained on the appropriate engineering controls protective equipment, and work practices to reduce the risk of cold stress. Employers should provide engineering controls. For example, radiant heaters may be used to warm workers in outdoor security stations. If possible, shield work areas from drafts or wind to reduce wind chill. Employers should use safe work practices. For example, it is easy to become dehydrated in the cold weather. Employers, therefore, can provide plenty of warm, sweetened liquids to workers. Avoid alcoholic drinks. If possible, employers can schedule heavy work during the warmer part of the day. Employers can assign workers to tasks in pairs so that they can monitor each other for signs of cold stress. Workers can be allowed to interrupt their work if they are extremely uncomfortable. Employers should give workers frequent breaks in warm areas. Acclimatize new workers and those returning after time away from work by gradually increasing their workload and allowing more frequent breaks in warm areas as they build up a tolerance for working in the cold environment. Safety measures such as these should be incorporated into the relevant health and safety policies for the workplace. If you have any specific questions about Atlantic Cape's policies, speak to your supervisor. Dressing properly is extremely important to preventing cold stress. The type of fabric worn also makes a difference. Cotton loses its insulation value when it becomes wet. Wool, silk, and most synthetics, on the other hand, retain their insulation even when wet. The following are recommendations for working in cold environments. Wear at least three layers of loose-fitting clothing. Layering provides better insulation. Do not wear tight-fitting clothing. An inner layer of wool, silk, or synthetic to keep moisture away from the body. A middle layer of wool or synthetic to provide insulation even when wet. An outer wind and rain protection layer that allows some ventilation to prevent overheating. This slide is an example of the different layers to wear in chilly, cold, and extremely cold weather. Wear a hat or hood to keep your whole body warmer. Hats reduce the amount of body heat that escapes from your head. Use a knit mask to cover your face and mouth if needed. Use insulated gloves to protect the hands, water resistant if necessary. Wear insulated and waterproof boots or other footwear. Safety tips for workers. Your employer should ensure that you know the symptoms of cold stress. Monitor your physical condition and that of your coworkers. Dress properly for the cold and stay dry in the cold because moisture or dampness, such as from sweating, can increase the rate of heat loss from the body. Keep extra clothing, including underwear, handy in case you get wet and need to change. Drink warm, sweetened fluids, no alcohol, and use proper engineering controls safety work practices, and personal protective equipment provided by your employer. If you have any specific questions or concerns, speak to your supervisor. You can find additional resources about cold stress at the website for the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, or NIOSH.